There will be a point when you come to watch your favourite racing series and you think, yeah, something's not quite right here. There's, Where's the magic? Where's the spark? And I'm not talking in a, it's not 1997 anymore and I don't like it, rose-tinted goggles, look back at your favourite sports. I'm talking like you're watching it now, you watch every year and you think, yeah, I'm not just not feeling it this year. Something's not right. And that could be for a number of reasons. It can be stuff like the regulation changes have made it a one car and driver series. Those same regulation changes have resulted in loads of manufacturers pulling out. It could also mean that nobody else can join the sport because it's too damn expensive, or that the commercial rights holders are trying to make things an exclusive club. It could be any of those things. And some of you are probably nodding your heads right now and going, yep, Andretti, in response to that last example, and I don't blame you. There's probably a ton of other real-world applications you can think of to every single one of those examples. One driver and team? That's Formula One. Manufacturers not being interested? IndyCar and V8 supercars. And the World Rally Championship, come to think of it. It seems at the minute at least that only the World Endurance Championship and IMSA are in a boom period. Everybody else is regressing or about to begin a downward spiral. And one of the series in that will they won't they bracket of going into a downward spiral is the British Touring Car Championship. Now anyone that has been here for a bit will know that these things are what I love. These are cars you can buy. They're then tuned up and then run at the best racetracks that this rainy island the size of Michigan has to offer. From the days of it being run what you brought to the utterly unhinged class point system to the peak of super touring and then into the next generation touring car or NGTC. Which was basically, whew, we've got something stable and the grids are healthy again. With the beginnings of NGTC, the crowds were back up, the racing was back to its elbows out self, and the grid was full of interesting shapes. The whole win on Sunday, sell on Monday thing wasn't so much there, but you were still able to support a team or driver based on what you drove, or which manufacturer you liked the looks of, or the product of, or, you know, going back to the old days of Super Touring, we supported what our dads were driving. And a few years ago, there were more cars on the grid. In the final season before the pandemic, we had BMW with two models, Vauxhall, Subaru, Toyota, Honda with two models, Ford, MG, Audi, Mercedes, Infiniti, and Volkswagen. So 13 different cars on the grid, and five of those models being manufacturer-backed entries. Now, there are a few asterisks that I do have to apply to that last little bit to make sure that everything is, you know, fact-checked, so to speak. In those days, BMW had two models on the grid because some of the teams were using the old 1 Series that the manufacturer team was using. So they had the 3 Series and the 1 Series. Same for Honda. A couple of the teams were using the older model of the Civic. Some were using, well, I say some were using Team Dynamics were using the brand new model of the Civic. And there's other things to take into account as well because the Volkswagen was long in the tooth, the, uh, the A-Class was getting a bit old, the MG was definitely getting old and other bits and pieces like that. But the rules, they're a bit more complicated and if I stay here to tell you everything about them, we'll be here all day. So let's just move on to the opinion stuff. Moving on to 2023, things looked a bit different. There are four constructors in Hyundai, BMW, Toyota and Ford, with Vauxhall moving to the independents and there just being Vauxhall, Honda and Cupra there. We've gone from 13 different cars to eight. And two new brands have joined since 2019 in Cupra and Hyundai. Cupra bringing the Leon and Hyundai bringing the i30 Fastback. Now, the pandemic would have had something to do with all this, but we definitely missed all the different shapes on the grid in the last couple of years. In the off-season, though, people have been looking at what's happening in the BTCC and thinking that things might start to go the wrong way, for want of a better phrase. Because in the off-season between the end of last season and the beginning of this season, a couple of the teams fell by the wayside and the grid has dropped in terms of entrance. In 2023, 27 cars were starting races, but in the winter of 2023-2024, 9 cars disappeared. Team Hard, who had six Cupra entries and one Motorsport who had three Civics, had their respective issues and had to pull out, with the Team Hard one causing quite a discussion online as they have been a team operating on a shoestring budget for forever. They're basically the BTCC's version of Minardi if we're talking in terms of performance. Thankfully though, some of those entries have been clawed back, for want of a better phrase. Basically what's happened is there is a team that's risen from the ashes of Team Hard, aptly named Restart Racing, who have managed to get two entries back onto the grid. So now, for 2024, we're looking at at least 23 starters. Now, the thing is, it's what you determine in your own opinion as to whether this is good or not. Because some people have their own beliefs of how things should be done. 
There are some who will think that more people on the grid means a healthier sport because more cars equals more popular, while there'll be those who think that they'd rather have fewer cars with good drivers in them. Essentially, quality over quantity. And Alan Gower, the BTC's version of Bernie Eccleston, has been on record as saying he's been wanting fewer entries for the last six years or so. His ideal number is 24, although he did admit to Autosport recently that he'd rather have the grid drop by a couple of cars a year over several years, as opposed to nine disappearing in the space of two or three months. But people are probably looking at it a diminished field, because it will bring back bad memories. At the end of 2000, the fabled Super Touring era ended, and it became, let's be honest, the Vauxhall Show. The BTCC was in the hole, and Gao sold up to a group called Octagon, who ran the show until 2003. And then Gao came back to try and fix the absolute shower that was left. The BTCC had brought in BTC Touring, a regulation set that needs its own dedicated video at some point, which saw spectator and manufacturer interest at an all-time low, before adopting Super 2000 rules in 2007. Now, Super 2000 was intended to be super touring, but without spending 150 grand on gluing a wiper in the right spot for aero, but it still didn't attract much in the way of manufacturers. So with that dark period in mind, you can be forgiven for thinking, this doesn't look good. However, from a practicality standpoint, 24 is the ideal number for the grid. Formula 1's hard cap is 26, although they never seem to want to get there with the Andretti stuff fresh in our minds, but this needs looking at from a practicality standpoint. The tracks that the BTCC visits aren't state-of-the-art grade 1 facilities. Okay, Silverstone is, but they use the old pit lane and the national circuit, rather than the pits on the Hamilton Strait that's used in Formula 1. Not only have the BTCC cars got to fit in there, but there's also the Formula 4s, the Porsche Cup cars, the Minis, and all the other support acts and their crews. It's going to get pretty cramped in there. And at Knock Hill especially, that's just going to be mental. But one thing that people might think is, just bring in pre-qualifying for Knock Hill or the season as a whole. The 2015 Formula 3 Championship had over 30 cars running on proper tracks, and it was an utter carnage fest. It shrunk to 20 cars in 2016, and was reformatted not long after. And it's actually funny that that's mentioned, because back in 2002, V8 Supercars had this... Well, there's no other word for it, panel show, where the drivers talked about the stuff that was happening in the sport and their own opinions on that, which is something that you would never see in Formula 1, because you can't criticise the sport now, can you? But basically, they brought up some good points, which are quite relevant to this whole thing surrounding you know, 32 cars at Knockhill, for an example. In that particular episode, they were discussing pre-qualifying and how the likes of some drivers, including former BTCC driver Paul Radicic, were having to pre-qualify. And they discussed maybe having a system in place similar to how Formula 1 had at one point, where it was the worst performing drivers over a three or six month period, and then it's they, they flip and flop depending on who's done well and who hasn't. Because there will come a point where it's obvious who is going to make it into the top 24, 26 or whatever, and who isn't. V8 Supercars was also at a point where the series had grown and they were happy that it had done so, but like the BTCC, they were trying to cram up to 32 cars into tracks like Wanneroo, Oran Park, Pukekohe, Gold Coast and Simmons Plains, which are just not capable of holding that many people, cars and the support series at the same time. The only circuit at that time that they might have been able to do it is Phillip Island, as they weren't racing at Melbourne at this particular time. 32 cars on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit knock yourself out. 32 cars at Croft? Gonna be tricky. Now the thing is, this was back in 2002 where motorsport as a whole was much, much cheaper. The thing is, if you were to do it today, you're going to lose entrance whether you have pre-qualifying or not. Either the series is going to get far too expensive that those at the back of the grid are just going to drop off simply because they can't afford it anymore, and if you have pre-qualifying, who is going to want to sponsor a team or a driver that's never making it to the main event? So there is that. The other problem that the BTCC has is that last season it was a one team and car show. You had Napa Racing and Ash Sutton up at the front and the pay drivers bringing up the rear because they just can't compete. Napa sunk in a lot of money last season and if you're in that team that's a good thing but under the current rule set probably not as much so. That same rule set the NGTC stuff has been in effect for about 14 years now. The only thing that's been running as long is the Dallara DW12 IndyCar. 
The hybrid system came in for 2022 and it sort of worked in that first season, but in 2023 it looked like it didn't work as well, which might have been due to the manufacturers designing around it to compensate. The cars aren't being held down by ballast like they used to, and the hybrid usage per lap, which is more pushed to pass than hybrid found on a Formula 1 car or a hypercar, hasn't really had the desired effect over the last 12 months. But some will argue that someone driving a car weighed down with 75 kilos of lead isn't a good look as much as one team and driver running away with it is. There's also the rules to consider with which cars you can use. The Vauxhall Astra, for instance, hasn't got long left, and if Vauxhall isn't willing to homologate the latest version of the car for the BTCC, we could lose that too. And with car companies more focused on crossovers and electrics, where is that going to leave the series in a few years? Will we see Ford entering the Puma and BMW a one series on stilts? Alan Gow has actually said if the manufacturers want to do that, they can. There's already discussions of the series going back to front wheel drive only, with BMW losing the 3 Series and reverting back to a 1 Series. And if Vauxhall leaves the grid, then that's one of the long time series manufacturers off, and Vauxhall is a huge part of the BTCC. It'd be like losing McLaren from Formula 1. So while I'm not overly concerned with there being 23 cars on the grid for 2024, the series will definitely need to assess where it's going over the next 10 years or so. It seems the series wants quality over quantity, and the only thing I would implore the series to do is bring back ballast, as that's been a better playing field leveler than the hybrid has been. But then, I'm not in those offices, I'm not seeing the data that's been brought in by the people who know what they're doing, and I'm not seeing those meetings. Those meetings are probably going on right now, and stuff will be announced when it's announced. The hybrid system is contracted with Cosworth until at least the end of 2026, but that doesn't mean they can't still bring back the ballast. They can at least do some tests, see if they both work together, and I mean, we still use the ballast and hybrid in the R Factor 2 TCUK series. Yes, I know it's a video game, but it still works as intended in that virtual environment. So it's one of those things where do you have this blunt tool as it was referred to or do you just rely solely on the hybrid that's one to see in the future and alan gown did say in an interview with autosport about the size of the grid even commercially it's better for all the teams it just works for everyone the big loser out of it when you consider how much we are missing as far as revenue goes on registration fees is for me to want to reduce it to 24. it sounds like i'm self-harming because i'm purposely bringing down our revenue but you do it for the best interests of the championship, not for my revenue. Otherwise, I'd keep it at 32. The registration fee has never been an issue because it's actually really good value for money when you consider. £30,000 is the registration fee for the whole season. Then regarding the hybrid and the costs that have been brought in with it, I'm not wedded to anything for 2027. Whether we decide hybrid is a good thing to have and it might come down in price or whatever, certainly the only thing I can tell you is we won't be going EV. So really, it depends on this year and next year to see where that goes with the hybrid. If at the end of 2026 it goes the way the WRC and ditches that hybrid, then it is what it is. So we kind of need to see where it all goes, and hopefully it goes in the right direction. Because we really don't want another BTC era. So then some opinions on the current state of the British Touring Car Championship. If this thing has made you think things about the thing, then like this thing so the algorithm can do its thing. And for more things from this thing, click the subscribe thing and get the bell thing on so you never miss out on anything that I do around here. Massive thanks as ever to the people at Patreon for the support, and if you want to help support me at a more personal level, then you can do so by following the link in the description, where there will also be a link to Discord, socials, affiliates, and other bits and bobs that you might want or need to know. Well, there's super thanks and memberships if they float your boat. So until next time, I've been Aidan Millward. Have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye.